Here we are in, what is this? This is week uh, six of 2025 in the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty. And this week, it's Colorado against USC. Obviously, uh, USC's 3-1. and one. Uh, They lost last week to Cal. USC was trying to um, finally kind of take their place where they were, you know, where they're used to in the college football world. But a... Um, yeah, they obviously could not do anything to stop Cal's offense. They lose 52-31. to 31. We'll look at that later. But they're our opponent this week. Uh, it's a chance for us to kind of, to kind of uh, you know, take a big step forward. Uh, we'll see. Obviously, our season's gone pretty well so far. We're undefeated. Uh, got a big win last week against Arizona to start the conference season. Um, but first, let's look around the country, right, as is our tradition. And right away, Alabama has gotten off to a disastrous start. They lose to Ole Miss uh, 49-21. to 21. It was 21 all at halftime, but Ole Miss, how about Lane Kiffin? Absolutely just running away with this thing in the second half, outscoring the Crimson Tide 28-0 to zero after halftime. So uh, Ole Miss wins 49-21. Uh, this is, of course, the Cal game. Uh, did not go well for USC. Looked like for a while they were going to be able to make a game of it after spotting the Bears a 21-0 first quarter lead. Uh, they would score uh, a couple touchdowns to get within a score. Um, but Cal would go into the locker room up by uh, 11. And then third quarter, they kind of put it away with uh, outscoring the Trojans 10-0. And uh, USC obviously was just too far out of it to be able to uh, get get the, get anything done. And so Cal wins. They are now ranked number 23. Uh, they were kind of um, uh, recovering from their own loss the week before. Uh, Washington and Oregon, big game here, and it is the Huskies. Remain undefeated. Get the, they uh, get a big win to take control of the Northern Division of the Pac-12, beating the Ducks 41-31. So a big win for Washington there. Uh, Penn State and Iowa. Um, it was the Nittany Lions with a 36-26 win over uh, the Hawkeyes. Uh, Iowa remains in the top 10, though, so they're right there. They're lurking. They're lurking. But Penn State now is in the college football playoff hunt at number four. Uh, Arkansas crushes Texas A&M 49-24. Big win for the Razorbacks. Uh, they put it away in the fourth quarter, outscoring the Aggies 21-0 uh, to win a very important matchup there. And this week, it'll be Michigan and Pe- uh, Purdue. Uh, the uh, Boilermakers are 3-1. and one. Michigan is 3-1. and one. Michigan coming off of that loss to Notre Dame. Uh, well, a couple weeks ago, I guess. They've since beaten Central Florida and uh, Northwest. So, um, yeah, big game there. They're the Big Ten. Then we look Tennessee and Georgia. All eyes will be on the balls and dogs this week. Georgia is 4-0. And Tennessee is 4-0. Uh, Corso is going with the balls. But you on paper, it looks like Georgia should be able to win the game. Uh, so it'll be an interesting matchup there. And Oklahoma. Remember, we're following the Sooners. This Sooners offense is absolutely loaded. Uh, they could probably um, go play with in the NFL right now. But they um, they actually struggled a little bit in this game, obviously. They uh, they did lead 14-6 to after the first quarter. But K-State would then go on a big run. They would score 22 points in a row to take a 28-14 lead. And it looked like they might be able to pull an upset. But... That Oklahoma offense finally got things going in the fourth quarter, uh, scoring 21 points in the last seven minutes to get a seven-point win and to remain undefeated. So Oklahoma uh, moves in, moves to number 19. We'll look at the polls real quick. And we see Clemson 3-0, Texas 4-0, Arkansas and Penn State. Uh, Washington is also right there just outside the top four. Texas A&M is six, LSU seven, Oregon eight, Florida is nine after beating Kentucky. Uh, Iowa, of course, after their loss is 10. Ohio State beats Wisconsin, so they move up to number 11. Michigan is number 12. Nebraska, 13. North Carolina, 14. The Tar Heels looking to try and make themselves relevant again. Uh, And Miami falls to Clemson and falls to number 15. Notre Dame moves up to number 16 after a win over Boston College. Alabama, of course, fell down to number 17. You've got Georgia at number 18 after their win over UNLV. Oklahoma there, of course, moves up one spot after beating uh, Kansas State. Coastal Carolina at 3-0 is number 20. Tennessee is 21 after beating Southern Miss. They struggled, obviously, but they did get it done, winning by four. Uh, Ole Miss, after that win over Bama, is 22. Cal, 23. Texas Tech lost to Kansas, so they fall to number 24. They'll play Memphis this week. And then Purdue uh, is number 25. So that's a look around the top 25. 
What does the Heisman watch look like? Well, right now, it's Eric Bush, the quarterback from Ohio State. He is on top. Um, we'll kind of look at his overall number so far. Uh, 59 of 103, not overly impressive, I guess. It's not even 60%. Uh, he does have 924 yards passing, 10 touchdowns already. That's probably what it is. In, in what, three games, he's got 10 touchdowns. Uh, he does have three picks. He's only averaging 231 yards a game passing. Let's see what his rushing numbers look like. Um, he is averaging almost 100 yards a game rushing. And he's got four rushing touchdowns. So my guess is we're, we're kind of in that log jam uh, part of the Heisman race, and it's just kind of a matter of waiting to see who um, you know surges ahead, who, who jumps out in front of everybody else, separates themselves from the pack. Um, so that's a look at the Heisman watch. Um, we'll look real quick at the scores and schedule. I've not been doing that this year, and I probably should have been. Uh, looking at the Pac-12, um, we'll look at the scores from last week. Uh, well, we did beat Arizona 45-13. Arizona State struggled to a win over Northwest, 31-27. It was Washington beating Oregon by 10. We saw that score. We saw the Cal USC score. Oregon State over Nevada, 37-35. It was a tight game there, obviously. Uh, Stanford beats Washington State, 28-23. Uh, and then Utah survives against Toledo, uh, winning 38-31. This week, of course, we'll be playing USC at home at Folsom Field. Oregon goes to Stanford. NC State, the big um, interregional matchup, will go to UCLA to take on the Bruins. And West will take on Cal. Uh, Arizona goes to Alabama this week. So after playing us, they have to go play the Crimson Tide. I don't envy the uh, 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 Wildcats there. And then Washington goes East to take on West Virginia. So a couple of interregional matchups there in the Big 12, or Pac 12. Uh, real, real quick look at the conference standings. Not much has happened you know, in conference play. But we're 1-0. Arizona State is 1-0. USC is 2-1. So USC can kind of get themselves back into the race with, uh, against us today. We'll see if they can make that happen. Oh, and I forgot. i got to go the other direction. Uh, Pac-12 North right now. Washington and Cal both undefeated there. Uh, Stanford is still within striking distance. Oregon State, Oregon each only have one loss. Uh, and Washington State uh, better get on their horse or else they're you know going to quickly be out of the race there for the Pac-12 Northern Division. So that's a look at the uh, conference standings. What about recruiting? Well, let's look at recruiting. Recruiting-wise, um, we'll go real quick, uh, take another look at our commits list, which uh, we, I think we might have gotten a couple. We've got Elbert Hawkins, uh, receiver Brent Williams, defensive tackle, uh, cornerback Dominique Smith, uh, Joey Armstrong, and the punter, and then Cedric White, our guard. So the uh, recruiting class is starting to shape shape up. I think it's it's a pretty good class. We've got a two star punter, but um, other than that, it's you know we're all three and four stars. So I feel good about where our class is. Um, some guys that I'm kind of going all in on right now. Uh, I've still I still want to get a second quarterback. So I'm I've backed off a little bit on Eugene Miller, but that's only because I have a quarterback. And then I feel like I could get Cameron Mackey if I really wanted it. But he's only a 54. So I'd like to get Eugene Miller. He's the guy I want. Um, so I'm going to keep putting points towards him. But got some other areas of need that I want to focus on. Matt Wilcox, the running back. I'm you know, targeting him pretty heavily. Want to get a good speed back. Um, and he's got good speed. 95 speed. Decent acceleration. Decent agility. He's the kind of running back that, I'd, um, that will work in our offense. Um, Torian Davis, wide receiver, is a four-star receiver I'd like to get. Uh, still put a little bit towards Osborne. Um, uh, and I, may, I don't remember if I had him put any towards him last week or not, but I, I need to get a couple good receivers. So there's my target. I would like to get a tight end, so I am starting to go all in on Lawrence Walton. I'm behind, so I've got to make up some ground. Hopefully we can get that done. Uh, offensive lineman is an area of need, obviously, and so I'm, I am I am kind of having to spread it thin a little bit across these guys, but I really want this guy, Robertson, so I'm starting to go all in on him, starting to go in on Andrew Mills. Um, mainly, I've got a lead, but you've also, I'm, there's, it's, it, there's competition. Right? I've got three other schools who obviously really want him as well, so I'm going all in on him. Curtis is a guy who's kind of a fallback, and Riley is the same, so I am going to you know, put points towards them, but um, honestly, they would just be more for depth. Uh, defensive tackle, Robinson. I'm going in on him, only really only because no one else is. Uh, middle linebacker is uh, John Charles, starting to go towards him. Hopefully, we can get him. Uh, 
in the fold and Ostrander strong safety it's an area of need and so I am I, I backed off a little bit but only because I have such a large lead I think I'm gonna be able to get him signed so that's a look at uh, the guys I'm going after uh, top classes right now uh, obviously have us number one but that's only because we've signed so many in the first four weeks um, and that's I mean eventually although two four stars I, I feel like we have a chance to have a top 25 class so um, hopefully you know that'll kind of work out looking at our team needs um, I'm I, I need a decent sized class uh, to have 70 if, if no one transfers I would need a, a class of 18 so I want to try to get 20 21 players that's my um, that's kind of my target we'll see how it goes uh, if I only got 18 I guess I would I would settle for that but we're going we're going we want a class of about 20 which that's that's a big class um, but we've got a lot of um, a lot of needs with this team and obviously we're losing a lot of players so what about USC well USC um, their coach is uh, still Helton. They run a um, they run an air raid offense. So we will look at their offensive staff. Uh, Dorsey is uh, you know he's he's a good quarterback, good not great, but he's a fifth year senior. And those those guys, I hate when I see that because they're the ones who give us the most trouble. Also has an above average arm, eighty nine power, eighty seven throw accuracy. So that could be a problem. Uh, running backs. Uh, Sykes and Williams that is a good two uh, two back combo uh, 91 90 and then their third team bat running back is an 89 so they're pretty loaded in the backfield and their fullback is an 89 that's obviously a very good for um, a very good fullback for NCAA 14 uh, wide receivers decent right? decent and then I would say deep 83 82 80 uh, then they have their tight end in there and it's a fourth team receiver um, and then you got Martinez and Stevenson 79 78 so while it may not be super high quality it's deep right there's depth and these guys are fast right? these uh, second and third receivers Smith and Hodge and they've got very good acceleration so um, they're gonna get the top speed quick they're gonna be a load to cover just put it that way Stevens tight end 84 pretty good left tackle 86 left guard 71 center 79 their right guard is a 53 they're starting a true freshman 53 overall right guard so hopefully we can get a little pressure on the quarterback and um hopefully we can you know contain their running game their right tackle though is an 86 so if we're going to get pressure if we're going to get penetration it's going to be up the middle um so because they've got two above 85 tackles uh defensively they've got a very good deep left end uh ernest bowman at 94 uh hunter is 82 but he is injured so the next uh guy is a true freshman 78 overall so that could be an advantage there defensive tackles are pretty good bailey is an 89 and cox is an 80 so that uh, and he's a true freshman so they've got um they're gonna be tough up the middle left outside linebacker 88 uh, middle linebacker at 99. Obviously, this is one of the top defensive players in the country, Ricky Washington. Uh, he's going to be all over the field. He's going to be a problem. And the right outside linebacker, Hefner, 94, but he's injured. Their backup is an 88, so they've got a good, solid um, linebacking core. Cornerbacks, uh, they're two, two starters, but, oh, look, which all these guys are above 90 speed, and you know, they have pretty good, well, very good acceleration, pretty good agility. So they're going to be able to cover our guys pretty well, I think. Um, our only hope is if they play a lot of zone and we can you know, maybe find gaps in the zone. But Prince, uh, Joe Prince is 78. It does drop off a little bit from their nickel back to their dime back. Free safety is an 80. It's okay, not great. Uh, strong safety, 78. So in the back end of their secondary is, you know, there might be some uh, advantage. We can, you know, we can, something we can take advantage of there. Special teams are very good. John Green is a 92. And then the true freshman punter, Demarcus Wright, is an 86. So USC uh, is obviously going to be the probably, well, no, not probably. They're going to be the most talented team that we've played this year. How will we do? Well, let's find out. Looking at the stats, um, I'd say we stack up pretty well. Obviously, though, we've been we've been highly successful this year with the teams we've had, we've been you know we've played against. Uh, USC is going to bring a different kind of challenge. It's going to be um, yeah, this is one of the best offenses that we've seen. So very unlikely we're going to be able to hold that nine points a game average. Um, we'll see, and that we also expect them to be able to run the ball pretty well. Although again, that middle that offensive line is a problem for them. 
We don't have the best defensive line, but maybe we can still get through and um, contain that running game. Um, looking at their pass defense, it's not great, so that bodes well for us. They're ranked 80th in the country. Um, they do have the third best rushing defense, so that, you know, how much of a problem that'll be for us, I guess we'll see. Uh, we do have some prospects in town this week. We got uh, Davis, wide receiver, four star, three star John Charles, a middle linebacker. And then Clint Curtis, the guard, um, two-star guard, will also be in town. Our top players, uh, Hunt, obviously, 97 overall. M uh, Mark Brown, our quarterback. And then the punter, Weber, uh, their top players. Wow, this is there's, it's a lot better than what we, Washington's a 99. Now, their right outside linebacker, Hefner, is injured, so he'll not play today. But B Bowman... Uh, will be a uh, will be tough to deal with on the left side of their defensive line. Uh, injury report: We've got none. Hefner and Hunter, though. Um, uh, Hefner's out five weeks. Hunter will be out just this week, so we'll be back hopefully for USC next week. So let's get to the field. This is a big game for uh, Colorado as they are trying to continue to build the program under Casey Clawson. Uh, this is their first real go against one of the conference behemoths in USC. USC struggled the last few years. They've uh, not performed uh, on the field the way that they believe that they should. Uh, even last week, they put in a disappointing performance against Cal. So can they kind of start to turn things around this week? Can they be the USC of the past, the USC that uh, most college football fans are familiar with historically? I guess we'll find out. Uh, as the Buffaloes take the field, we went with a little alternate look today. Black pants, black helmets, um, kind of a black out, I guess you could say, look. Uh, of course, USC wearing their traditional uniforms. Neither of these teams have gotten the treatment yet from uh, the COD football revamped uh, mod team. Uh, I believe they're next on the list. Um, but uh, obviously, they've done, those guys have done a great job. Just haven't had time yet to get to these two schools. But... Uh, big Pac-12 game. Colorado can really kind of surge ahead. Meanwhile, USC can get their, uh, get their names back to the top of the division race this week. So without any further ado, let's get things going. So third and two. Colorado is bringing some pressure. They get it away. Get it complete to Stevens, who gets past the first tackler and gets it across midfield. He'll pick up 24 on that catch. Stevens, so far, Dorsey's favorite target. Third and five, Dorsey. Four receivers. He'll throw into the end zone. Let his receiver too far. So that'll be fourth down. USC will probably have to uh, kick the field goal. So here we go. From the 13. This will be a 23-yarder. Should be a chip shot for the USC kicker. And it's good. And Stanford upsets Oregon, 38-31. to 31. The Cardinal keep Oregon reeling after uh, the Ducks lost last week to the Huskies. They fall again this week. So they're going to slide further down the top 25 and further down the Pac-12 North table, uh, giving Stanford a chance to kind of get their hat into the ring. Oregon now, a lot of work to do if they want to win the division. And a couple of other big upsets here. We've got number one Clemson falling to Georgia Tech, 49-24. to 24. Meanwhile, Ohio State falls to Northwestern 28-24. So a couple big upsets around the country here. So Mark Brown comes out, tries to answer USC's opening drive. I uh, had a good game last week, obviously. Brown takes the snap. Pressure coming, but he gets it away complete. That is 85. Who is that? That's not Herman. So the Buffaloes need the 10-yard line. Brown takes the snap. USC blitzes. They pick it up, and another incomplete pass for Mark Brown. Colorado will have to kick a field goal. This will be a 38-yard attempt for Weber. Snap to hold. The kick is up, and he got it. So we got a tie game. It's 3-3 three three here in the first quarter as the Buffaloes answer. So here comes Dorsey now from the 25. He'll throw. Throws to his right, and that is complete to Stevens again. 18 yards. That'll be a first down. You'll see we're trying to run around the tackles because they are going to struggle to run the ball up the middle. Dorsey to throw. Across the middle. That is complete to Sykes. He'll get the first down before being dropped. Picks up 10. Third and one. Sykes comes out of the back, or Williams out of the backfield. And pass across the middle. Falls incomplete. 
fourth and one coming up. What will USC do? USC needs the 35. They need to get it just past the 35. And Dorsey will pass. He's in trouble. He gets it away. Complete to Sykes. Sykes gets knocked out of bounds. Colorado takes the ball back. Third and five. Colorado needs the 48. Across the middle. Pass is knocked away. Colorado will have to punt. So here comes USC. Handoff to Sykes, and he finds a hole. He is into the secondary. He's at midfield. Finally brought down at about the 43 of Colorado. 36-yard run for Adam Sykes. So third down and five. Hodges sends Stevens from right to left. Not Hodges. Um, Dorsey. Dorsey throws to his left way behind the receiver. Way behind the receiver. So that'll be fourth down. Brown brings the Buffaloes to the line here. It's 3 3 game, still first quarter. Brown to the left and complete. That's Webb or Smith. He had to reach down and grab that on his shoelaces. But he makes the catch and gets the first down. Big play there for the Buffaloes. Second down and four. Brown to throw. He gets it to the tight end, who shoves off a defender. He'll get the first down. That's Larry Johnson. Seven yards on the catch. That's his first catch of the game. Third and one. Colorado needs the 13. Brown in trouble. Hit as he threw. Incomplete. That'll make it fourth down. So Colorado with a little decision to make. So Colorado sends Weber out for a 32-yard kick to try and give them the lead. And it is good. Colorado now up 6-3. to three. Touchback. So Dorsey comes out now with two backs. That's a look they haven't seen yet. And the running, uh, the fumble. <laughs> Got stumbled on my words there. Fumble and Josh Parham falls on it. They lose eight yards. They hand it off. I'm not sure who that was. It wasn't Sykes, but Parham falls on it. 35. Dorsey will pass. To his right. It's complete to Sykes. Sykes dives to get the first down. And that's the end of the first quarter. So. Uh, offenses have not been overly impressive. Uh, Colorado has managed to take a 6-3 lead. Dorsey from the gun. We'll take the snap, hand it off. Ooh, and Steven Williams goes nowhere. Drop for a three-yard loss. Colorado called the blitz, got some penetration, and nailed Steven Williams as soon as he had the ball. So here comes Colorado. Offense really has struggled today. It has not done very well. They've had some decent field position on a couple drives. Oh, but there's a long pass complete. That is Ray Webb for 37 yards on the fade route. And that Colorado probably needs to do more of that, attacking the deep coverage. And Webb there makes a big play, gets Colorado into USC territory. Third and two. They need the 22-yard line. Brown to throw. He's in trouble. Gets it away, and it's complete. Reggie Ray gets his feet down and makes the catch for the first down. Four yards on that reception. 20-yard line here for Brown in the Colorado offense. Brown to throw. Across the middle. That's complete to Freddie Herman for 12 yards. First and goal now for Colorado. Second and goal. Brown takes a snap. USC blitzes, but... Brown gets it away to Kenny Williams, who makes the catch for the touchdown, and Colorado will now go up by 10 after the extra point. It's 12 to 3. Brown made the throw despite the pressure. Perfect strike. Touchdown, Colorado. Dorsey. We'll take the snap. Across the middle. That is complete. There is his man. Oh, that's Jake Smith. I was thinking it was Leon Thompson, but it's Jake Smith. 
So third down and eight. Dorsey on the screen. Has it complete to Sykes, but Sykes will not get there. Colorado, another big stop. Fourth down coming up for the Trojans. And the Buffs, the chance to really take a commanding lead. Mark Brown obviously picking things up here in the second quarter. From the 43, Brown will give this to Hodge. Hodge up the middle, big run there. Got 10 yards on that carry. That will be another Colorado first down. USC showing blitzes from their safeties. And they come heavy blitz, but they get it away. That is complete to Reggie Ray for eight yards. First and 10 for the Buffaloes. From the 21 is Brown. He'll take the snap. He gets it across the middle, complete to Herman, down to the six. First and goal. So first and goal from the six. Colorado, a chance to push their lead to 17. Ground, pockets collapsing, and he is dropped. Sacked for an eight-yard loss. So push back now to the 14 is the Colorado offense. Brown takes the snap. And he's in trouble again. Sacked again. Two sacks in a row by USC. Eight yards and then nine yards. And it is now a long way to go from the end zone. Colorado can barely see it from where they are now. It'll be third and very long to get to the end zone. So Colorado snapping this third and goal from the 22. Brown takes the snap. He looks, throws it into the end zone. Complete to Freddie Herman for a touchdown. 23 yards out. What a throw. It's just the wide cross route. And the USC secondary let Herman get in behind. Maybe that's what the Buffaloes needed was to move back, give themselves a little more space. So you see now, first and 10 from the 25. Can Dorsey get the Trojans back into this game? They're now down by 17. Quick throw to the right. They've got a man wide open. That's Jake Smith for 20 yards. Dorsey to throw. And oh, he had, the receiver had it and dropped it. So that'll be fourth down. It's been all Colorado here in the second quarter. Third and eight. USC trying to get the ball back with one more chance to score before the half. Brown gets a pass complete out to Venny, but it will not be enough. USC takes a timeout. Colorado will have to punt. Third and inches, USC coming up tight. And the handoff to Hodge. Hodge will get the first down. He gets three yards. Every time we need one, we get three. Second down and one. Brown gives it to Hodge. Hodge moves, runs around the right tackle and will get a big gain. 12 yards on that carry. So from the 35, third and four for Colorado. USC showing a safety blitz and they bring it. But Colorado picks it up. Brown moves around in the pocket in a little trouble, throws it long, almost intercepted by Ricky Washington. So Weber out to attempt a 52-yard field goal. This will be kind of straight on. So it'll really kind of be about how, if he can get the distance. Kick is up. And he got it. Colorado's lead is again 17. So Dorsey brings the USC offense out. He'll bring his tight end in a little bit from the slot and closer to the tackle. And fakes the handoff and then throws it to the tight end. And there's a fumble. Colorado picks it up. First play of the drive, fumble. If it doesn't get reversed, this will give the Buffaloes very good field position. As the tight end Leon there makes the catch and he just drops it. I think that's a fumble. I don't think they'll reverse that. We are going to review it. So let's see if they if they turn it. 
Ah, it could be his knee was down. Yeah, you know what? I think they're going to reverse this. And, and rightfully so. Will be rightfully so. Because, yeah, his knee's down right there. Then the ball comes out. So they'll, they'll, they'll reverse that. So after that reversal, USC will breathe a little sigh of relief. They empty the backfield on second and two here from the 33, 34-ish. And Dorsey will throw across the middle. That is complete. Once again to the tight end who Leon Stevens makes a big play, gets 25 yards. Nice cat throw and catch and run. Dorsey from the 35. He will throw. Colorado blitzes, but... They get it away, get it to Jake Smith for 29 yards. It'll be first and goal. Third and goal. Dorsey to throw. Into the end zone, caught by Dan Ferguson for a touchdown. And USC pulls to within 11 with the extra point on the way. That'll make it a 10-point deficit. So here goes Colorado after the USC touchdown. Can they answer? Brown to throw. And that pass is complete to Freddie Herman for 15 yards. Herman's got his eighth catch. He's got 90 yards. First and 10, USC showing a blitz and they bring it. But Brown gets it away, gets it to Alston who breaks a tackle, gets across midfield, picks up 16. Third and six from the 20. They need the, well, about the 13. Uh, on the stick route, complete to Herman. That will be a nine-yard catch for the first down. So first down from the 11. Colorado can get a first down inside the one-yard line. Brown here to throw. He's in a little trouble, and he is sacked. Four-yard loss. Second down and 14. Brown to throw to his left complete for a touchdown to Kenny Williams Kenny Williams just running a wheel route is on the mesh concept but again Colorado over the top gets past that USC secondary so Dorsey now with a <laughs> 17 point disadvantage. Oh, but he finds a, a quick uh, pass out to Jason Lloyd on the left for 20 yards. That'll be a first down. Dorsey, three receivers to his right. Ball to 45. Pocket holds. He goes long. And it is intercepted. Intercepted. He was trying to get throw the ball over the top. But the pass is picked off by Hill. But there's roughing the passer. That will negate the interception. USC will now have the ball in Colorado territory. Dorsey now, four wide. He will throw. Across the middle. That one is complete. Made a one-headed grab there. Nice catch by Curtis Martinez for 16 yards. First and 10. Handoff. Ooh, and a Derek Lloyd makes the sat or the tackle for a three-yard loss. Or sorry, Lucas Hill. Hill came in on a safety blitz. So Dorsey now sends his uh, running back out of the backfield. Pass across the middle is complete and a nice move by Zach Stevenson to pick up 14 yards. Dorsey spread the ball around now. So Colorado, or sorry, USC needs the three yard line for the first down. Dorsey to throw. He throws it to the left and incomplete. So that will be fourth down. Looks like USC is going to have to try a field goal, get within a couple touchdowns. So, we'll try this again. Snap, the hold, the kick is up. And good. So, USC cuts it to 14. And Michigan right now holds a 38-35 lead on Purdue in the fourth quarter. Brown takes the snap. He will throw across the middle. That is complete to Herman. Herman with the catch will get uh, will go over the 100-yard mark. Uh, well, I guess he already had. 
And that is the end of the third quarter. Colorado holds a 30-16 to lead. USC's offense coming to life a little bit. But will it be enough? Colorado needs the 27. Brown brings his troops to the line. He will throw to his right, and it's dropped. So that makes it fourth and 10. This would be a long field goal attempt. So they send Weber out. He's already hit a 52-yarder. This would be a 55. The kick is up. It's long enough, but he, he kicked it way left. That is no good. So USC will have the ball with decent field position. They'll have it at their own 38 coming out with a chance to make this a single-digit game. Empty backfield for Dorsey. Colorado blitzes. Dorsey, incomplete. It'll be fourth and inches. What will Colorado or USC do on this uh, fourth down? Fourth and inches. Dorsey keeps, and he stops short. Colorado will take the ball back. What a big stop on that read option play. And Colorado keeps USC from adding any points. Second down and five. Brown will take the snap. Looks to throw to his right. That's complete to Reggie Ray for 11 yards and a first down. Reggie Ray has come and made some made some big catches today. So Colorado quickly moves the ball to the USC half of the field. Brown to throw to his left. That's complete to Alston. Big gain down inside the 35. That's a 12-yard reception from the 31 here. Brown trying to keep this drive moving. Eat some more clock. Throws it to his right. It's complete to Alston who gets the first down. Down to the 23. Colorado needs the 12. They're at the 15. It's third and three. Brown takes the snap. Looks. Throws. And it's complete for a touchdown to Brandon Anderson. And that will give Colorado a three-score lead here. Still three and a half minutes, probably too early to say that the game is over, but Colorado feels very comfortable right now with where we're at. So Dorsey now with a big task to try to get USC back into this game. He will throw to his left. That's complete. That's Curtis Martinez for 17 yards and a first down. Dorsey makes an adjustment on third and one. He's going to throw to his right. It's complete. And Ferguson picks up 15. And Dorsey to throw here. He's going into the end zone. Got a man. That's a touchdown to EJ Green. 29 yards. That will make it 37 to 23 after the extra point. Got in behind the Colorado secondary. Just a simple go route. And we were in cover four, so that should not have happened. So, onside kick coming here, obviously. And Colorado, hands team, brings it in. Kenny Williams. Third and three. Colorado needs the 33-yard line. Bring a receiver in motion. Brown hands it off, and Palmer gets back to the line and no more. So we're going to go ahead and let uh, Weber try this kick. This will be about a 53, 54-yarder. He missed the 55, but he's made a 52. And that kick is good. Colorado goes up 40 to 23. That should just about do it. Even if USC scored twice, it would not be enough. That gives Colorado a three score lead and probably seals this game. Fourth and goal for Dorsey and the USC offense. Any hope for a miracle, they must find the end zone here. It's a screen. Dorsey gets it away. It's caught. But. Stevens will not get there. Colorado will take over. And that will just about wrap things up today. Victory formation for Colorado. And that is the game. What a win for Colorado, although this is kind of USC's MO. They've just had disappointing season after disappointing season. 
As we see here, Mark Brown, 368 yards passing. Colorado struggled running the ball, but we, that's just going to kind of be who they are this year. Their offensive line is not quite good enough to put up very big numbers on the ground, but Mark Brown doesn't need big numbers on the ground. 391 yards, four touchdowns. Great game from him. Uh, great game from Colorado as they uh, even the defense played well. USC was able to move the ball through the air, but uh, the Colorado defense made plays when they had to, and they really kind of kept the USC running game bottled up, which, you know, it was really kind of a recipe for a disaster for the USC offense with that offensive line up the middle being so weak. They just had no chance of getting anything going on the ground up the middle. Uh, and Colorado did create a lot of pressure, um, which you know caused uh, Dorsey to struggle at times. On the other hand, it did mean there was a lot of roughing the passer penalties, and we'll see the penalty numbers in a moment. But uh, in the end, Colorado with the win. So before I go into the to the stats here, let me mention that um, I was a little ish. I had paused my recording near the end of the first half and missed USC's field goal drive. That was really all that you missed was a field goal drive by USC. Um, so I do apologize for that. But now let's look at the numbers. A lot of first downs from both teams. Some of those were created by penalties. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, they Both teams, I mean, you're, you're closing in on 900. I guess it's over 900 yards of offense uh, between the two teams. So both teams are moving the ball pretty well today. Uh, Colorado only 47 yards on the ground. Not a great day for the uh, for the running game for Colorado, but USC only had 55. Um, USC outgained Colorado in the air, uh, 408 to 391, meaning USC had uh, more yards overall total offense. Um, but Colorado a little more efficient. Um, third downs 8 of 15 for Colorado. Look at USC 13 of 23. Uh, they were 0 for 3 on 4th downs. Colorado came out big every time the Trojans tried to go for it on 4th down. Uh, in the red zone, uh, USC 4-1-2, Colorado 5-4-1. Uh, no turnovers by either team today, so it's just, just kind of a straight-up win. Um, but you look at the penalties. Look at that. Colorado 7 penalties for 101 yards. Uh, that really kind of kept USC uh, on the field. Um, USC also won the possession battle. That's something that doesn't usually happen. Honestly, this game, it was like I was playing myself. <laughs> USC's offense was very similar to the one we run, uh, which is pretty, I guess, I don't know I don't know about real life, but uh, in the game, Clay Helton runs that air raid playbook, and they really stuck to the four wide. They use a tight end a lot, but he also was in the slot a lot. So uh, they used a lot of four wide, uh, two by two formations. So... Um, but we were still able to get the win. Uh, looking at the player stats, Brown, 42-59, almost 400 yards, four touchdowns, 71%. That's, just a, that's a great day. That is a great day from a, uh, a quarterback in our system. Uh, Alston had uh, 26 yards, uh, Hodge 39. Each only had six carries. Mike could have uh, given them ball a little more. Uh, but look at Freddie Herman, 12 catches, 124 yards. He's our best receiver, so... It's the kind of numbers you expect out of him. He was also able to get a touchdown pass. Mike Smith caught six for 52. Venny, not much out of him today. He was pretty quiet. We tried to get him the ball, as you can see. Five catches, but he only managed 28 yards. Alston came out of the backfield to catch five for 45. Uh, then the other receivers really kind of spread it out amongst themselves. You had Kenny Williams, Reggie Ray, uh, Larry Johnson, tight end, came in, caught three balls. Ray Webb. Uh, caught a couple passes, and then he kind of disappeared. I'm not sure what happened to him. I don't know if he got injured or something, but he was gone for a large part of the game. Uh, Brandon Anderson uh, came off the bench, made a catch for 15 yards for a touchdown. Uh, so good day from uh, the receiving core. Obviously, uh, we did really like to do and get the ball to a lot of different guys. Um, defensively, uh, Kyle White, 11 solo tackles. He led the team. Uh, Evans, of course, had nine. Uh, TFLs, White had four TFLs. I don't know, did we have any sacks? No sacks today. Obviously no picks or uh, fumbles or anything. Deflections, had a lot of deflections. Uh, Stallings, Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson from his defensive tackle position. Got his big paw up in the air to knock down a couple passes. Wesley Welsh on a, from his cornerback position knocked down a couple. Uh, Ray Walden, Kyle White, each with one. Uh, no other defensive stats. Uh, kicking game, Weber, 4 of 5. We asked a lot from him today. Uh, he uh, missed one, but it was a 55-yarder. He had a 53-yarder and a 52-yarder. So, you know, we, we did ask a lot out of him. 
Uh, he made both of his attempts from uh, 30 39. Uh, so, yeah, good performance from him. Punting, two punts for an average of 49 and a half. Uh, he did have a touchback, long punt of 57. So, uh, yeah, good day. Good day. Big win for Colorado. Um, you know, we knew this would be a struggle. Uh, and at times it was, but we were able to get it done. So make sure you tune in next week to see if we can keep this run going. This is Vol Force One signing off. I'll see you guys next time.